Welcome back to another episode of This Old Mess. Today on This Old Mess... <laughs> Welcome back to the workshop, everybody. So glad you could be here. Walter here. Oh, boy. On the saw horse. No, not the sore horse. The saw horse. I made these saw horses many decades ago. And there's a lot of plans out there on the interweb for sawhorses. And these are ugly. These are quite ugly. And I don't remember if I copied one from my master or if it was a common pattern that we all, all carpenters used. I hate to say this, but decades ago. It had something to do with the angles 7 and 11. I have to measure these and see where that comes into play, but I think it has to do with the splay of the top board and then the splay of the legs. Not sure. These sawhorses are so fast to make because they, they are just nailed together. Ka-chunk, 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 ka-chunk. They rely on the mechanical ability of the nails. Now, in retrospect, a little forethought, if I used better wood, screws and glue and possibly a couple of mechanical joints, they would be in a little better shape today after all this use. But, but, the tops were hemlock, the legs were one by sixes, and the bottom shelf was like a one by eight, and the gussets were one by sixes. So, they were made from the cheapest wood we had available. Usually it was offcuts that are found on a job site and you just just bang them out. And typically if you're building a house, you will make a bunch of these. Short ones, tall ones. There's a set of tall ones back over here. And then when you're done with the job, because that wood was bought on the job as part of the job, you left the sawhorses there, and then the painters and wallpaperers and other people that were coming in to decorate the home, they would continue to use them. So they became part of the house, then they would sit in a garage or an attic or someplace, and they were there for the homeowner if the homeowner wanted to do a do-it-yourself project or something. So they were part of the house. But mine were not built as part of a house, they were built as part of uh, my toolkit, working on different jobs, you pick up scraps, you build them. Um, in retrospect, I probably really should have added one more board across the top and screwed these and glued these as well as screwing down that top board. But I'll tell you how strong these are. Even after decades of abuse, being left out in the snow, in the rain, in the baking sun, and then coming home with a truckload of lumber, anywhere between Three quarters of a ton and a full ton. That's 2,000 pounds or more piled on top of these and they didn't budge. So the design is good. It's just they took a beating. Now, in addition to talking about sawhorses, I need some help. I need help from the community at large. At large. Behind me here, you'll see a bunch of 
short logs, and some other chunks of wood. I need to get rid of this stuff. What I have is basswood, tulip poplar, northern white ash, white oak, and some aspen. Now today I processed one chunk of basswood to open it up and see how the moisture is because these have been indoors here for six months and also to see how much staining was occurring. There's a little bit of enzymatic staining occurring here and here. Um, Basswood is typically used for wood carving. I also like using it to make thin lumber for craft projects, thin lumber for lining jewelry boxes. Um, it takes paints beautifully, it takes felt and velvet and other liners. So the basswood is great in that regard and I've got nine more big chunks over there I've got five logs here, um, so if you know a wood carver, give them my contact information. It's hot. It's down there. You know, down there in in the description box. So this is aspen, and I turned one bowl out of this stock before. The massive storms hit us last year and the financial calamity that followed. <clears throat> As you can see, it's getting a little bit of enzymatic stainings, maybe some fungal growth. Now, I know that when I anchor seal a short log like this, it buys some time, some storage time before it starts to dry out, starts to shrink. Now, I think we may be at a point where it's not drying out, but it's starting to stain, which is not a big deal if you're a wood turner. So, if you know a wood turner looking for bowl blanks, or if they want to cut it up into other squares for making pepper mills or lidded boxes, anything like that, have them give me a call. Contact me. It all has to go. I can't, I can't do anything with it. I don't have a bandsaw any longer. I don't have a wood lathe any longer. I have no way to process these except with the chainsaw. So, <coughs> the two ways you can help me with this video is number one, Share it with anyone or any place you know that's looking for basswood for carving. The other is if you know anybody looking for wood turning stock, bowl blanks, and there's more than just this. There is uh, three four foot logs of tulip poplar over there standing up. There's three four foot logs of northern white ash outside and there's a five foot log 26 inches in diameter of white oak. Man, I so wanted to make some more of those big bowls. I did that big 26 inch red oak bowl last year, but it's not to be, all right? So I just need to move on. So in order to do that, I need to get rid of all this stuff. And uh, if you have, I mean, I've stored lumber for, for my entire life. I know how to store lumber when it's processed. I'm just wondering how long I can leave this in the log form before it either cracks or begins to rot. So I think I've got time yet, probably a few more months, but uh, I would rather see this stuff go before 
July 1. I'd like to, it to go, go ASAP. I thought about loading the longer length logs up on a trailer and sending them off to um, a local bandsaw mill and then getting some two and a quarter, three and a quarter, four and a quarter slabs made out of them. And then that way they can begin to dry and I can begin to process them easier on my table saw inside. I, that machine will never leave my side. I've had it all my life. I got it at 14 and it was made in 1950. So yeah, it doesn't owe me a penny. We've I've done million of cut, million a million cuts on it, rips and cross cuts and miters, everything. So that's about it for today in this episode of this old mess. So I did make some shavings today. They weren't plain of shavings, but as always, if you found something useful, helpful. Maybe entertaining, give it the old thumbs up. And as always, the most important part is that you need to head out to your shop and go make some shavings. Walter out.